Um, let's talk a little bit about RFK. What was going on there? He decides to run for president. And, and let's talk about his great speech the day that Martin Luther King was assassinated. Could you talk a little bit about yeah. that? Because he basically, you know, this was way before cell phones and and 24-hour news cycles. And he was basically giving the news to these people in Indianapolis. And could you tell that yes. great story? Yes. So a uh, dark and rainy night in Chicago. And again, yeah, no cell phones, no internet. So there was a rumor that somebody had tried to assassinate Martin Luther King, but he had survived. That's what the crowd was initially told. And Kennedy was very late to his speech. And the reason for that is he was rewriting what the speechwriters had written for him. He's like, no, that's not gonna do. So this is a speech he wrote himself and it's fairly short, but I found this lovely quote from a young white woman who was there. She was 16 years old, part of the crowd, very afraid because she could feel the anger building in the crowd. And she said, and then Kennedy came out. The minute he started talking, it was like the laying on of hands. Every word out of his mouth was a bomb. The whole crowd was swept up in the emotion and I stopped being scared. And he announced that King had been murdered. And the news, she says, was like, wham, wham, wham. He said the words, but I couldn't understand the context. She said it was like cartoons in her head. You could feel the shock going through. And as they flew out of Chicago, they looked back and a lot of the city was burning, but the area where Robert Kennedy had spoke did not riot and did not burn because he told them, look, I know how you feel. My brother was killed too, but he was killed by a white man, meaning, you know, it wasn't a racial thing. And so he was acknowledging, I don't even, you know, have that in common with you, but he's like, I know how angry and sad you feel because somebody very dear to me was killed. And I want justice too, is kind of the implied message. And then he ended with a great quote from Eschelus, even in our sleep, pain, which cannot forget, falls drop by drop upon the heart until, God, I'm going to cry, <laughs> until in our own despair against our will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. And then he closed by saying, what we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness, but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another and a feeling of justice toward those who still suffer within our country, whether they be white or whether they be black. And then he went on to ask for prayers and ended with, let's dedicate us to what the Greeks wrote so many years ago, to tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. Let us dedicate ourselves to that and say a prayer for our country and for our people. I mean, can you imagine the grace to write that? Unbelievable. You know, because he was a friend of, of Martin Luther King. Yes. If you like this clip, be sure to subscribe. You can find full episodes of That's Enough Out of You on our YouTube page, plus Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Look for us on Patreon and check out our website. Just go to that'senoughoutofyou.com for more information.